I'm Eric Urslev. I've been working in the Rockies for about 30 years. I originally worked at Colorado State University, now I'm at the University of Wyoming. And I'm the lead PI for the Bighorn Project. Bighorn Project uh, is a test of hypotheses for the formation of the Rockies. The Rockies are a fascinating area because we don't know how they formed. They're one of the few mountain ranges which are so far from a plate boundary that we really don't know how they connect with plate tectonics and thus they are in a sense a new frontier. We've done a lot of work on the surface geology, even at depth in terms of oil and gas exploration and other things which help us define the upper 10 kilometers of the crust. But all these different models predict very different things at depth. So we have mountain ranges, and some models have, would have big faults which would cut all the way through the crust and the lithosphere and bring everything up. Other models just crunch it sideways, and the stuff down below is not involved. And what we lacked was good information at depth. What EarthScope did was create a data set which gave us some inclinations as to what's going on down there, but the US array, because it's spaced at about 70 kilometers apart, didn't have the resolution. So a number of colleagues and I uh, proposed a project called the Bighorn Project, which included uh, active and passive seismic. So active is where we set off explosions. Rather fun to see, hear, a, have a ton explosion explode a couple hundred meters away from you uh, and feel that wave come through. And then also listen to distant earthquakes, which is sort of like doing a CAT scan. And we did that to try to figure out what's happening through the whole crust, which is about 40 to 50 kilometers thick. And what we're able to do is look at the geometry of the lower crust for the first time at great resolution. So the US array was 70 kilometers spaced seism seismometers. Here in the Bighorn Project, we had spacings down to 100 meters on a large area. In fact, we had over 100 people out sighting 2,000 seismometers before we set up, set off our big charges. The most exciting thing to me is I think we finally solved the problem of the Rockies. It's a lot of different models, as I said. Some had everything moving up and down, predicting great big cuts through the Moho. What we saw in the Moho, which is the boundary between the crust and the mantle, was a structure completely unlike what happened up above. And that structure is probably a relic of things in the Precambrian over 600 million years ago, whereas the Laramide orogeny, which formed the Rockies, was 60 million years ago. So what that indicates is that there's a detachment under the Rockies. We're used to thrust detachments in what are called thin skin thrust belts where we're sliding within the sedimentary layers, creating folds as we slide in there. But what we're doing, dealing with here is actually sliding in the middle of the crust. So what we seem to have is a detachment at 30 kilometers, which is sort of similar to what I've set out here in this vest, where if this is the lower, the moho, and this is the crust, what we had was a push from the west. So this would be probably a oceanic plateau hitting the west side of the US at about 60, 70 million years ago uh, during subduction. It pushed Utah, Nevada, California east. And when it did that, we detached on this surface, creating the Rocky Mountains. This might be the Wind Rivers, that might be the Front Range outside of Denver, and created sort of a complex array of structures because it's pushing on this very old crust. It's crust which is up to 3.5 billion years old, has all sorts of weaknesses which pop in all sorts of directions. And that was one of the real puzzles we had about the Rockies, is that the Rockies do move in all sorts of different directions. The orientation of the arches, as I call them, go in all directions. 